What's up everybody? We are in the Golden Gate Estates. We're going to World Bakery. And we're gonna start our day off with some good Cuban food. Yes. Look at how nice this, this cafeteria is, guys. Que bonito though, beautiful, beautiful. Must go that way, watch out. We got ribs, picadillo, look at that pork, fish. Look at these plantains. Um, look at pork chunks, meatballs, rice, tamales, um, yuca, congri. It's all awesome Cuban food. So they have um, like a buffet style thing here. You can get from, depending on what type of meat you get, from $6 up to like $10 for like, you know, like a buffet style meal. And then over there they have a bakery and then they have pressed sandwiches. So can't beat that. Love it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> There's like chunks of ribs in there. Mm -hmm. To get a little bit of extra flavor. Mm -hmm. Sweet potato, yeah. I like that. Yeah, yeah sweet potato. Okay. You want yuca or do you want sweet potato? I want a boniato. Boniato, okay. sweet potato. I like, I like yuca, but I like boniato. Boniato. Yeah. Boniato. Okay. No boniato. Boniato. <laughs> Yo, check this out, guys. For 21 bucks, we got hungry, plantains, pork, yuca. My drink, Katie's water. Boniato is a sweet potato, picadillo, which is like ground beef, and the yellow rice with some chunks of meat in it. That looks good. All that for 21 bucks. Look at all these. These are guava pastries. I love them. These are cheese pastries. Coconut. Coconut? Yeah, coconut. Croquetas. Hola. And wow, look at all this. Looks like meringue. Beautiful. Cupcake. Blonde. Look at all the goodies. I love these things. I don't know what they're called, but it's got like three layers. It's got like three layers. So I don't know what they're called. And it's got like this sugar powdery thing on top. They also do catering. These things are awesome. I don't know what they're called either. But it's like a bread with like a... What is it that's inside the bread? It's good. They did our wedding cake. Look at their cakes. Hola. Look at their cakes. Alright guys, so we are in the Golden Gate Estates and today we're going to explore the Golden Gate Estates. I love the Golden Gate Estates and I, if you're moving to Florida, it might be the perfect place for you. It's a very country place. It's, it's more country than the rest of Naples. We're going to explore the real estate, we're going to explore the culture, everything you need to know about the Golden Gate Estates. So if you're thinking about moving here, uh, you can make the right choice with your family. It's a great place. Uh, crime is not a concern out here. It's, it's a great area. 11 years ago, they made our wedding cake and it was the best wedding cake anyone has ever seen. To this day, people still remember how good our wedding cake was for our wedding. It was amazing. And World Bakery did it for us. So I was having a little shot with the baker and you know, we we're talking about how there's so much French influence in Cuban culture especially like culinary wise all our pastries cubans are big on pastries and our desserts are probably second only to like french to be honest when it comes to bakery goods cubans are probably second to the french to be honest i don't think of any maybe i'm wrong maybe that, that's my personal opinion like corlear county the county that naples sits on and Golden Gate Estates and Immokalee and Everglades City, Marco Island, uh, according to new statistics, is 30% Hispanic. There's a lot of French influence within us Cubans. 
um, and you can clearly see it when you look at our at our pastries you guys have asked on other videos why um, in Miami everybody's houses is are fenced in why is you know the fence what's up with the big fences what's up with um, what's up with the big fences what's up with all the railings on the windows um, so I think maybe on, on this trip today I want to illustrate to you guys that the whole fencing in the property thing and metal, metal railings on the windows and stuff like that it, it's not really a crime thing it's like this house here that is a massive undertaking it's a lot of blocks a lot of gates and they have a code to get to their house it's a gated community like it's just nice about out here in the estates is forget about paying dues to live in a private community you got a few acres you put a fence around that you're in your home private community that guy right there some are about 2.5 acres some are about five acres most lots are gonna be about 2.5 acres so they're pretty good sized lots really nice country feel area and you can hop on over and be in naples and have all the city amenities you want so as you can see guys there's a lot of construction going on here in the golden gate estates if you're gonna buy out here i would really recommend buying a newer house and later on in the video i'll give you some in-depth information about why i think you should buy a new house but i think you know most of the land out here i think maybe 80 percent of the land or 60 percent of land is still sitting vacant so because there's so much vacant land out here they're gonna keep building for many many years you know it's kind of like a more modern they might go with like like a burgundy tile color instead of a terracotta if i were buying a house out here i would buy a newer house now the the quality of these builds i don't think they're built to the highest quality you know so you might want to you know just pay attention to the quality of the cabinets may not be the highest it may not be the highest quality build but at least you're buying something that's going to remain competitive in the market you can see there's a shingle black roof on that and they kind of gone with like a white paint job you know one thing i've noticed about the market here in the naples area is that people want the newest the best if your property is not um up to the standard you know as far as being you see all these signs we buy junk cars everywhere i hate those things it's uh see there's still you know here on both sides of the road we have empty lots on both sides so there's still a lot of room for new houses and the trend that i've noticed especially on the the western side of the estates closer to naples is that when they build these houses nowadays they're not building two bedroom two baths they're building four bedroom four bath houses they're building houses over 2600 square foot or more easily uh, the footprints are bigger of the properties and just overall the properties just keep getting bigger and bigger especially on the on the side of the estates that's closest to naples see they, they're switching up the style you can see it's got it's got like a gray color gray color soffits are like dark gray and then the roof is asphalt black so you know there's still a lot of land there's a lot of building going on so if you're going to move in here just think about what the buyers are going to want because there's still a lot of houses for sale a lot of older houses for sale lots of older houses for sale and they just don't move the same way like there's two houses on this street so far for sale and they're building new ones right next to it so what that lets you know is that's a newer style house so they're you know you get like here we got like an old ranch old ranches but on this street you can see that there's probably just on this side of the street there's four or five new houses going up four new houses on this particular street going up and they all have a dark colored shingle roof you know that's just the style they're going with nowadays right next to an older ranch
in Latin America, we do this. So when you look at Miami, neighborhoods that have really low crime rate, yeah, everything's fenced off. They, they have, they're on every single night and it annoys me because it's so bright outside that it bothers me. You know, I've had to put up like really thick curtains just to keep the light from coming into the house because they have these giant bright lights outside on all four corners of their property. And we live in North Naples. There's no crime in North Naples, but they think it's just part of their culture. Or, you know, they're accustomed that lights around their property and a giant fence that it's like a crime reduction thing, but it's not necessary. I think just Latin people come from countries where there's a lot of crime. They go on these very elaborate security measures, you know, putting up lights on all four corners of the property, fencing in their properties, putting up lights on all four corners. And it's a real extreme security measure that's probably not necessary in most places. Here in the estates, there's canals that divide the estates and they're like blocks. And only a few streets actually have bridges to communicate. And the people on these main streets to connect the estates they're not really happy about the true traffic. So they created these uh, snakes, which obviously nobody really respects. Everybody just flies through the middle. Nobody actually, you're supposed to slow down to 10 miles per hour and, and snake your way through it. Everybody just runs down the middle of these things and nobody actually slows down for them. Look at this one. Oh, wow. So that's what they don't like. The people that live on these uh, these streets that have a bridge, they really don't like all the true traffic. So if you're gonna go end up in the Golden Gate Estates, one really good piece of advice is to try to end up on a street that's a dead end and uh, the kids can't play outside, et cetera, et cetera. And uh, you know, they've created these buffers to kind of slow down the traffic. But as you can see, nobody really does it. It's just kind of a, a waste of palm trees and cement really when i first came to naples even though i lived in north naples my school was um oak ridge middle school and there's a lot of kids from the estates and a lot of those kids i was actually surprised that for middle school there was actually so much drug use and drug consumption in that middle school um so i think in the estates you have a little bit of a it's not bad but it's not perfect either you know and I, I tell people the, the school forget everybody talks so much about great schools great schools hey these schools aren't going to raise your kids you are one of the quietest and most remote areas of the Golden Gate Estates are Everglades and DeSoto on the south side however more people now than there are roads so they're working on extending extending golden gate it's gonna be a two-lane highway each direction they're working on it now and in the meantime it's a nightmare Always use your turn signal in Florida. Whoa. We're on Everglades heading southbound now and there's also a lot of work going on here. Here, there it goes. So yeah, there's a lot of deer just running around here. Just deer running around.
We are on Everglades and 26 Southeast. This is a more remote part of the estates. Let's take a ride. beautiful house right there big yard at the end of every street you have a canal and even the most remote areas of the estates like in the 20s southeast the construction is it's non-stop guys but the fishing in these canals is amazing there's saltwater species and freshwater species you can catch a snook a tarpon a bass there's peacock bass from brazil there's oscars and there's so much exotic stuff from other countries that people have released that you'll catch while fishing that's incredible it really is uh, a fun place and if you're on a if you're if, even if you're not on a canal um some of these streets have a ramp this one doesn't but people have kind of made a little makeshift ramp on the side of the ditch this street nobody has but usually they'll clear this out and you can put a small boat in and you can fish these canals or if your property is directly on a canal then you can access the canal and fish it and you, you just need a small john boat yeah i wouldn't go with a canoe or a kayak because there's so many alligators out here that would probably be a bad idea but fishing what you get out here in the golden gate estates is tranquility peace um it's a very Nobody around. I mean, just hear the wind, feel the wind, go fishing. If you're into the country lifestyle, but yet you want to be close enough to work in civilization, then I would definitely recommend the Golden Gate Estates. And uh, you can live in a luxurious house um, and still have all the amenities of the city. You know, sometimes if you go into a rural community that's just too far out, and too incommunicated, you can't even get good internet, you can't get good cable, and it just makes life a little bit miserable. Here you can have all the city stuff, yet still be out in the middle of nowhere, pretty much. One of the biggest problems you're gonna have out here in this part of the Golden Gate Estates is that there's so many bears that you're occasionally, or commonly end up with a bear flipping your garbage can over and you end up with this on your lawn. This is going to be your biggest fear. Like when you walk outside your house at night, you're going to not look around for criminals. You're going to look around for bears. There's a lot of bears out here. And you can tell that this particular house has really had a problem with one bear coming in here and doing this type of stuff. As you can hear, sounds like a war zone back over there. <laughs> People love shooting their guns out here. And you're not going to be worried about people breaking into your house. You'd have to be out of your mind to break into somebody's house out here. Or a bear. A bear will break into your garbage can. It's just rolling up to this canal. Just, I love the peace that you get out here in the estates. It's very... Once you're home, I guess, you know, you, got, you go to the town and work. And once you're home, you're home, you know. Lots of peace and tranquility out here. I love the canals. 
Just soak this in, guys. All right, let's go for a ride down this street. You're gonna notice that there's more new houses going up and then there are older houses that were already here. Everglades crosses over 75 and I'll explain to you guys the significance of this bridge that's right over 75 first Welcome to the Picayune Strand State Forest. That is Interstate 75. Everything north of there has been allowed for development. However, south of Interstate 75 is a state forest. It's protected. However, we're going to get into the history of why this state forest was almost turn into a massive development all right guys let's take what we have here the speed limit is 30 miles an hour on all these roads se prohibe piscarbolitas picayune strand state forest designated entrance park so you're probably wondering why is there a spanish sign why did the state of florida publish a sign in spanish Se prohibe piscar bolitas. It is prohibited to collect or to harvest bolitas. Bolitas is little balls, but the translation is there's palmetto berries out here, guys. All these palm trees produce a little berry, and that little berry or bolitas is consumed by the black bears and there's a problem in this county because there's a company that buys uh all the, the palm berries the, the fruit of the palm berries they buy them and they turn it into medication for cancer so all these palm trees that are out here all these trees produce uh basically a medication for cancer and then that stuff you can sell for like three dollars a pound depending on what time of year it is when it gets up to about three dollars a pound Los piscadores, the pickers, basically, come out here to piscar bolitas. And they didn't post the sign in English, they posted it in Spanish because most of the people who are engaged in this activity are coming from the vicinity of Immokalee, which is about 90% Hispanic or something like that, 95% Hispanic. 
Therefore, the sign is in Spanish, not in English. I just think that's hilarious. That the state of Florida has to issue their signs <laughs> in Spanish. <laughs> that's pretty funny. You are in bear country. There's a lot of bears out here, guys. You have to know this. If you're going to come to the Picayune Strand State Forest, you have to pay when you come in. There's the Iron Soldier, is what they call this guy, the Iron Ranger. This Somebody's got to pay the bear money for the Rangers. So you got to put like $2 per person or something. $2 per person, and there's six year free. So when you come in here, you're going to grab an envelope, and you're going to put money in the envelope and stick it in here. And then the envelope has a receipt that you keep to prove to the ranger that you're buying him beer. Okay, everybody. So we are in the Picayune State Forest. Picayune Strand State Forest. We're the only ones out here pretty much. There might be a few other people. It's a massive area. As you can see, there's paved roads. We're on Miller right now. The roads that you're allowed to be on are only the paved roads and when they allow it. Right now, they allow you to be on Miller, Everglades, and 100th. And I think 52nd or 54th. You can look at a map or call the Florida Wildlife before you come out here. And make sure that you understand what roads you're allowed to be on. Usually, Miller you're allowed to be on because it's paved and Everglades. Now, you can go anywhere you want out here on foot. And there's actually avenues. It starts off at about 48 and it goes down to, I think, 128th. So, it's a massive area. And they go by two. So, you usually go from 52, 54, 56, all the way down to 128th. All this area, you're free to roam only on a vehicle. On paved roads so all these avenues like 56 58 60 61 all 62 whatever all those avenues you can ride a bicycle down you can walk down you can hike you're not allowed to drive on them guys they actually this was all plotted for development that's why there's roads and that's why there's avenues this was all going to be eventually houses and I think they built about four to six houses something like that I can't remember exactly how many houses they built but they had already started building houses here and a bunch of people in Collier County got together and said enough is enough and they purchased all this land through a conservancy that they built and there was about 10,000 individual parcels that they had to buy and figure out how to obtain all this land so that they could preserve it and today we have this state forest otherwise development of Naples would have came right up into here as well so it's a good thing that today other than the roads that cross this place and the blocks that this today is something that we can appreciate in its natural state other than the roads and other projects that the state does back here for some reason so free to roam all this area but you're only allowed to drive on the paved roads let's go explore it
developers have had their eyes on this region of Florida for a long time with the intentions of totally destroying this place. This habitat is not like any other habitat in the United States. Do not be mistaken, there's nothing like this anywhere in the United States. This is a unique place. The animals and the plants and the habitats that exist here are unique only to Florida. When it is 30 degrees in Tampa, it is still 65 here overnight, right? In the winter nights. The climate, the plants, and the animals of this place are unique. Nowhere else in the world is there another habitat like the Everglades. This is a unique habitat. And therefore, it is important that it doesn't get turned into developments and houses because developers have had their eyes on this part of Florida for a while. They plotted their roads and they were ready to destroy this place. But the people of Collier County stood up and said enough is enough and they decided that they wanted to repurpose this place. Now, you're probably wondering why the state of Florida, this is a new thing they built here. I think we're about 14 feet high. They want to flood the Everglades again. So this retention wall, this is a massive, millions upon millions of dollars have been spent to create it, to create this wall. It's a massive wall in the middle of the Everglades. It is a massive construction project. You can see this from a satellite image in space. This thing is just massive. And there's a system of dams and dikes and stuff. And what they want to do is anything south of here, they want to let it flood again. So this is a retention wall to prevent the water from flowing because eventually they want to reflood the Everglades. So I believe, or even before that, for agriculture, there's massive efforts to kind of drain the Florida Everglades. So we built canals that are still existing today, and those canals dried up the Everglades. So now this wall is kind of going to do the opposite of the canals in holding the water and preventing the water from leaving in order to restore the Everglades back to its original condition. So now you have canals that take the water out and walls to keep the water in. I think this is just a waste of money. Let it be whatever it is right now. Just let it be whatever it is. I just think that keeping on tampering with nature. Do you know how much money it costs to build this? This is like, like two miles long or longer. Two, four miles. I don't know how long this thing is. It's, this is a massive project to build a wall to the middle of the Everglades to restore the flow of the water that we... It makes no sense. The whole thing makes no sense. Just leave it the way it is. Because then now you have... Now you have the... the, the first, first you had canals draining the water out that were not natural. Now you have walls to bring the water back in that are also not natural. So I think the situation now is worse than before because now you have a two four mile highway and I don't know it makes it makes no sense to me it just seems that the more we temper with nature the worse we make it Alright guys, more with tampering with the environment. This is what they call a prescribed burn. Yes. This is a prescribed burn, which means that we took this land off of the hands of developers and gave it to the state of Florida. The state of Florida builds massive walls and burns it. Again, I really don't feel that the intervention of I think this just needs to be left alone like these prescribed burns supposedly right 
And I'm just gonna give you guys my personal thought on prescribed burns. The reason they burn this stuff is now, after it burns once, it can't burn again because all these palmettos, these things here are highly flammable. But once they burn, once they burn like they have now, they won't burn again. And then the grass grows nice. It's nice for the deer to have fresh grass. I get that. So it allows the it allows the habitat to kind of uh, produce fresh grass. And then the habitat doesn't become a fire hazard. Now, what created the fire hazard was the fact that we created canals to move the water out. Because... This normally wouldn't be a fire hazard because it used to be flooded until we drained it. So now we have to do prescribed burns to eliminate the fire hazard because a natural fire in the wrong time of year with the wrong winds can actually destroy Naples pretty much. Uh, Naples can actually like burn to the ground if if these you know if these if these branches are not burned. In a controlled fashion when the winds are favorable in the rare chance that there's a a wind out of the east and there's a fire then pretty much naples could be engulfed in flames by a wildfire kind of like what's happening in california Mo luckily for florida most of the time the winds are out of the southwest or out of the um north so those are the predominant winds that we have so but anyways they burned down the everglades in a controlled fashion so that the Everglades don't burn the cities down whenever they feel like it but if we hadn't drained the Everglades to begin with we wouldn't have to have prescribed burns so it's a cycle of human intervention because of human intervention if we had just left this place the way it was before we would have never really been where we are now having to prescribe burn areas oh, I don't know if my I don't know if my explanation makes any sense to you guys but that's pretty much how it goes prescribed burns are controlled burns to prevent burning that's like let's say one day there's by any chance a wind out of the southeast which is not that common here but if there's a wind out of the southeast at 19 miles per hour and all this caught fire in a matter of five hours naples would be like burned to the ground basically but because they do these prescribed burns it doesn't happen What I like about prescribed burns is that it reveals all of the human things that are in this environment that aren't supposed to be here. You can find them more readily. So if you're weird about finding stuff like I am, like that little Heineken bottle I think it is, or I don't know what this little thing is over here, you know, rims, beer cans. If you're into exploring and finding weird human artifacts, Beer cans, beer bottles, stuff like that. And by the way, what type of jerk throws a beer can into the Everglades? You hear nothing other than the birds. If you want a quiet, peaceful place, this is probably it right here. Stop shooting at the signs. What are you supposed to do in bear country? I can't remember what you're supposed to do in bear country. But I know what I'm going to go do in bear country. I'm going to go look for a bear.
Into the Everglades now. Like really, this is a trail that's been trafficked more likely by a bear than by a human. I'm not gonna lie, this is a little scary. It's more likely that a bear has been coming through here than a human. this I have this of course this is not even one claw of a bear oh my goodness this is not even one claw of a bear a bear's got ten of these oh my goodness guys wow oh What a discovery. Oh my gosh. What a discovery. I don't know if you can appreciate how big this is. Oh my gosh. Wow. I had heard about this tree, but I had never really seen it. Oh my gosh, what a place. We are really discovering some neat stuff, guys. Obviously, DP, somebody mark this tree here. Somebody side a few beers here and just throwing them on the ground. Guys, this is awesome. Let's see how close we can get to this. Hopefully there's no bear sleeping in here. And this would be like the perfect place for a bear to sleep or a raccoon. Maybe get closer. <whistles> Make some noise. I'm sure there's somebody sleeping here. They hear us. Oh gosh. Like you can literally go inside of this tree. It's so big. I guess they have this tree branch here to help climb up here. What a discovery, and I'm sure this is dangerous because this is, it feels really hollow. Wow, let me just give you guys an idea of how big this is. It's got to have a four foot diameter right about to there. Wow. What a find. First I had a little bit of fear. Like, what am I getting myself into here? And then you discover this. Like, are you kidding me? Like, are you kidding me? Look at this thing. Ah, yes. Add this to my list of Kohler County things, guys. I discovered the tree. Yes. There's actually a bigger one you can crawl into, but for some reason, it looks like maybe lightning struck it and then 
used to be able to walk right into it. I think lightning struck it and then, yeah, lightning struck it. Wow, looks like lightning struck it and it's just split it. If you, uh, this tree is on Google Maps, by the way. If you really search the Picayune State Forest, you'll find this tree on Google Maps. But it's definitely not the same anymore. And after getting struck by lightning. Wow. Unbelievable. The one in North, and look at that. It totally engulfed these two uh, palm trees. But now that uh, it's been struck by lightning, it's lost a lot of its power. And all the branches fell. So this is, uh, if you're a Kohler County resident and you know where the spot is, looks like we have some, some lightning damage. Most of the big cypress trees didn't make it because the, uh, what do you call these guys, the, the first settlers of Florida didn't really care about the cypress trees. They wanted to make coffins and houses and Believe it or not, one of the primary uses, one of the primary uses of cypress log was for coffins. So to bury our dead, we pretty much destroyed one of the most beautiful natural resources that North America had. This is a quarter of what a cypress tree in North America should look like. It's big. It escaped the onslaught. Probably the reason it escaped is because there's patches of cypress trees in the middle of pine land. So there's pine land, there's one patch of cypress trees. They didn't work it because there was only a few of these trees. It wasn't worth clearing roads to get just a few of them out. Only the big cypress survived for the most part. And the big cypress was also uh, preserved. Unfortunately, we've destroyed too much. Let's get out of here, guys. I don't like to be out here at night. Being out here at night terrifies me. It's not 911, it's 116. Basically, if there's an emergency, they want the helicopter to identify which street they're on. You can hear the water falling right over there. So if you like fishing, check out Jose likes fishing and I'll show you guys not only fishing spots, but a lot of stuff that I, you know, a lot of spots where I usually hang out. So if you're big on hiking, fishing and stuff like that nature, check out Jose likes fishing. And like I said, I haven't uploaded it more than a video a month lately because ever since I got focused on Florida hood blogs, I've kind of had to, I haven't had time to focus on that channel, but that that's, uh, that's where I post on my fishing videos, so. If you like fish, and check that out. And uh, I show you, it's just like Florida Hood Blogs. I was showing everybody where all the good fishing spots were. I was really helping people who like fishing find good fishing spots, which made a lot of people angry. And Florida Hood Blogs made a lot of people angry too, because they were like, you're helping all these New Yorkers move down here. I'm like, they're going to come down here anyways. You might as well point them in the right direction. <laughs> ah, it's like every time you do something to help people, there's always going to be somebody who um, who's going to be mad at you for helping other people. Isn't that incredible? Well, we don't all think the same. Some of us think about helping other people. and Me, I want you guys, like, I want to help you find places to live, places to travel, places to fish. I want to, I want you to enjoy yourself as much as possible through the advice and suggestions that I make. Like, and it benefits me because I make income off it. So I'm able to make money helping people, which makes me happy. And it's just a beautiful round circle of, of good, good activity. All right, guys, this is the end of our Golden Gate Estates video. I hope you guys liked it. If you watched the entire video and you're not subscribed, you should definitely subscribe. If you like this video, you'll like my other rants.